So the question came up about this hypothesis testing problem. I just want to work through it to explain uh, how we can do this and how we can use stat crunch to work on it. Um, and so what we're looking at here is in a survey of 155 ex senior executives, 47.7% said the most common job interview mistake is to have little or no knowledge of the company. Now, if we look at that, then that means that 47.7% uh, or 0.477 times 155 is going to give us basically 74 who said that, so we'll keep that in mind for just a minute. We want to test the claim that in the population of all senior executives, 40% say that the most common job mistake is to have little or no knowledge of the company. So we're testing the claim that 40% say that this is true. And so we're saying that the, the proportion is equal to 40%. So we want to identify the null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, test statistic, p-value, conclusions about the null hypothesis, and final conclusion that address the original claim. So there's a lot of information we're being asked to do here. But if we look at it, the null hypothesis is always going to have equals in it. Um, and in this case, we're testing the claim that it's equal to 40%. And so we have a couple options for that that we can see here that would work, that p would be equal to 0.4. Now, if the null hypothesis is equal and our claim is equal, then the alternative hypothesis is going to have to be not equal because the alternative hypothesis must be the opposite of the claim or um, <clears throat> the exact same as the claim. And it must be one of three symbols, not equal to, greater than, or less than. Um, and so we see that the only one that will work is the not equal to. Um, and we check our answer and we see that that is true. So then we want to look at the test statistic. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to use StatCrunch to find this. Um, StatCrunch has a lot of great tools in it and so when we click on StatCrunch then what we're going to want to do now is to use StatCrunch to do this hypothesis test. It takes care of most of the workforce. We just have to know how to interpret the results. And so what we're doing here is we're testing a claim about a proportion. So we go down to proportions and we only have one sample that we're working with and we have the summary of the data. So we're going to click on with summary and the number of successes. Well, remember just a minute ago we found that that was going to be 74 and the number of observations that we had was the 155. We hit next and we tell it we want a hypothesis test and in our null hypothesis the proportion is equal to well that's our 40 percent there so we say 0.4 and we hit next and we'll go ahead and store the output in a table that makes it easy to go back um, and we see then that here we have the proportion p is what we're testing here we have a count the number of successes out of the total 155 so our sample proportion matches up with the 47.7. Standard error, let's not worry about that just yet. But what we get is that the Z statistic is 1.967. Um, and so that tells us then that the test statistic here is Z. We want to round that to two decimal places. And so we're going to put in 1.967, which would be 1.97. And we check answer and we get the wonderful feedback of fantastic. Now, the important thing with hypothesis test is actually the p-value. have to move over. The p-value in this case is 0.04912. Um, so let's round this to four decimal places. So 0 0.0491. We check answer and we have nice work again. And now we want to identify the conclusion about the null hypothesis. And the final conclusion that addresses the original claim, and we're going to assume a 0 0.01 significance level. Um, so we're going to compare now the p-value to the significance level. This is our cutoff for what's usual versus unusual, uh, or whether this result uh, is likely to occur by chance. And if it's less than 0 0.01, it's not likely to occur by chance, but since it's greater than one, it is likely to occur by chance. And so we identify the conclusion about the null hypothesis. And if you look at the flow chart or you work with this, then it turns out we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. The p-value is not less than alpha. And now do we want to warrant rejection of the claim or not? Well, if we reject it, then we can say there is not, or we can, if there, if we reject it, then there is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection. But since we failed to reject it, 
there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection. And so when we check our answer, we get nice work again. And so we have then these steps for solving a hypothesis testing problem using StatCrunch.